Hello and welcome to another Node Red video. In this video, we're going to look at reading IoT data uh, from a SQL database. Uh, so, a follow on video to two previous other videos where we looked at uh, writing uh, IoT data to a SQL database. And we're going to be reading the data using the SQL select statement. And our select statement is going to look something like the one shown here select star, select everything from the table sites, where the field, which is site in this example, equals X. And we're going to order by the timestamp and we're going to limit it to 100. Now the flow we're going to be using is actually a real working flow. This is a, a flow I use to monitor my sites and it basically monitors the uh, page load speed and it displays the data in a graph like you can see here and it also logs it into a, a SQL database. So it's, do, it's doing both. And what we've also got here is a form where we can actually read the data that we've uh, written into the database. And you can see it here, I can select and I can select it from by the site. I've got actually three sites. And we can select a particular page load speed. Is it greater or equal to? And we put in a value and we put it as um, five seconds. And then we put a date range here and I'll go from the 1st of October to the 28th of October. There is a gap in this data because uh, it was stopped um, for the last two or three days while I was doing something else. Okay, once I've done that, I just submit it and you can see here I get the results appearing at the bottom here. Let me take you through the actual flow itself. We've got a collection of uh, user interface widgets down here, which is basically text input and drop down boxes which you can see here we got some drop down boxes here and we got text input here and we've also got a a time here which is this date picker widget here which i'm using here to select the start date and the end date okay and the outputs from those uh, widgets are actually passed into a function and the job of the function basically is to record uh, the data from those widgets and also to hold that to store it until we click on the submit button so nothing's going to happen until I click on the submit button and you can see the submit button is here and then it displays the data uh, using this template node here so the function outputs the select statement into the SQL database and we do a time conversion to convert the time because it's in a Unix timestamp format, so we want to make it uh, readable, which would be converted to this type of format. And then we display to say in the template node here. Okay, so let's go through the function node. But before I do, uh, just a quick look at these nodes. I've been calling them widgets, they're actually nodes. Um, the topic here is set to site. So I'm I'm sending in the site name here, but this topic is set to site. And if I look at the value here, then the topic is set to value. And if I look at the submit, it's set to submit. So we know which node has injected the payload by looking at the topic. So we're going to look at the topic when we go into the function node to know which of these nodes has actually injected the value. So let's look at the function node. Now, we're storing our data because it's got to be held um, in the function node because we're going to inject these one at a time. So you can't inject them all in, in one go. You're going to inject them one at a time. So we're going to click on, we're going to click on this and that's going to send in the site. So we're going to choose this and that's going to send in the page load, whether it's greater than, equal to, whatever. And we're going to alter this and set in the value etc. So we have to hold them in storage uh, until we get the submit and we're going to use the data sorry the context object to do that and the variable is data so it's a JavaScript object called data which we store there. So we extract the topic, extract the payload, we do a comparison is a topic site if it is then we store the payload into data.site if it's value, then we store it into data.value, etc. Okay, um, we do a few checks here. If the value is undefined, then we set it to a predetermined value. And here we're setting the data. See it here that we're storing it back into the context object. Okay, 
Now, if the topic is submit, then we have to submit the SQL query. Now, before we can submit the SQL query, we have to build the query. Now, again, we do some checks, some sanity checks on the, on the data to make sure we, the data is okay. And you can see here, there's the select statement. And you can see here, there's another select statement here. The top one, we're looking at the data value here. This is the one that we're going to enter here. So we use an enter of value here. So we're looking for a page load speed greater or equal to a particular value. But if we don't put one in there, it's perfectly valid. So if this is if it's let blank, it's perfectly valid, which means we want all the data regardless of the page load speed. And then it will be on, on the date. So here we go here. And this is the select statement we're building. So the query is select star from site where, and there, there's the site name. And remember, this is the same syntax we were looking at in the previous video. So we, this is a, the site name is a string. So we have to surround it with parentheses, which we've got here. And of course we have to delimit it. And then we order it by timestamp and we, in descending order and we limit it to 100 which is there now if the data dot value is not equal undefined and again we test the site the site not undefined and now we build a, a slightly different query and we select star from sites where the site equals whatever it is and the page speed here page speed here is whatever the value is and we can order again by timestamp and descending order and again a limit of 100. So you may be wondering um, where is the times in here where's the start date and the end date. Now that's all done by this part message entry here which we tack on to the end and you can see it here part message here and I build it up here so if the start date is equal to zero, then the part message is blank. So we, we, we're actually going to get, go for all of the data, not a particular time limit. Otherwise, we're going to have to build the, the timestamp. So the part message says, and timestamp is greater than start date, and timestamp is less than end date. So we're going to be looking for values between, greater than the start date and less than the end date. Otherwise, we're going to be looking for all values. We're going to set it to blank. So this part message here, if we go and look at one of the query here, it says, let's look at the simple one here. It says select star from sites where site equals whatever the site is, and part message, which is here, timestamp is greater than the start date, and timestamp is greater than the end date, which is there and then we order by timestamp descending order and limit it to 100 queries so that's the thing there so the the flow is going to be made available so is the database actually so you can actually run the queries you can um, test this out uh, it takes a bit of getting used to building these queries I'm um, trying to work on a, a, a better way of, of doing this so we can more automate it than actually build them all manually like I'm doing at the moment. And I recommend that when you come to do these yourself, or when you're trying these out, is that you do them from the SQL command line first. You build the query from the SQL command line. Then once you've got it working from the SQL command line, then you translate it into this type of query here to put into your flow. Uh, make sure it works first is the is the motto really. So once we've built the query we assign it to the topic because the query has to go into the topic field and then we just return it. And we've got two returns so if the query is not equal to blank then we return it so there's something in the query. If it is blank then we just return nothing. So nothing goes gets sent into the uh, SQL node. So providing we've got a query, we inject it into the, the SQL node 
here. The result comes out here and we have a little time conversion that converts from Unix time into a more readable time format so we can display it. And then we pass the entire message on to the template node and the template node displays the data. You can see it here. So we're just using a simple table to display the data. Okay, so that brings us to the end of the video. If you've got any comments on the video, then please leave them below. If you like the video, then click on the like button below. And if you want to be notified of new videos on the channel, then you can always, always subscribe to the channel and remember to click the notification bell when you do. And if you do use social media and like to share it, then please feel free. And until next time, goodbye.